she she connected one woman who was a, a daughter of a, of a of a chief chieftain i prayed for that daughter the child was also healed and through that daughter that's where i had connections to come to south africa do you see what I'm doing? but what if i've neglected that woman that was poor my first time to fly my first flight came from that person through that connection that girl. Now, what if I despise and judge that she's poor? Can you see that? Your miracle is in people that you don't even, you can't even expect. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why treat everybody with respect. Amen. Whether they look dirty, respect people. The Bible says, the Bible says, honor all men. Say louder, honor all men. Honor all men. How many men? Oh. Should you respect people that have money? No. Honor people, whether they are poor, honor them. Respect them. Just say after me, say loud, I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. Of the word of God. So today I will continue with part two. Set a watch on your mouth. Set a watch on your mouth. Set a watch on your mouth. And our focus verse is Psalms 141. Psalms 141. Psalms 141. Verses number 3. Make sure your phones are on silence. Psalms 141. Verses number 3. So those I said on on uh, On Sunday, if you if you want to join Asher, you make sure you text me because Sunday I want to have meetings with you after service and I'll talk. So Brother Baldwin has already texted me. So after service, Sunday I'm gonna have a meeting. Just so if you want to serve in Asher, you make sure you see you see me. I want to, to reform. Then Sunday after service, I'll have a meeting. And then teach us. And I'll start having meetings with everyone, every leader and workers every month so that we can grow. Psalms 141, verses 3. Look at this. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Say louder. Set a watch. Set a watch. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Before, my mouth. before my mouth. Then he went on to say this. Keep the door of my lips. Say louder. Keep, Keep the door of my lips. Of my lips. So the word watch means God. So actually, David is praying to God. He said, put a guard. You know a guard. The one who guard your house or guard your things. He says, put a guard on my what? My mouth. Also the word guard means control. Put a control. Also the word watch means put a protector. You know when you buy your phone you put a screen what? Protector. It is there to guard your telephone. LCD. Liquid crystal device from breaking. That's why you put a, your screen protector. So also on, on your mouth, there must be a protector. Hallelujah. <laughs> also the word watch means observer. Observer. So on your mouth, there must be an observer. Something to observe what comes out of you. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, after this teaching, your mouth is going to carry an observer in the name of Jesus. It also means, watch means inspector. So you need an inspector on your mouth. Close your eyes. Say loud after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I, need I need an inspector, an inspector. On, my mouth. on my mouth. That's what is 
asking the Lord to do. Also, the word watch means study. You know, study that means you are verifying, study. Many people don't start before they talk. <laughs> eh? When you begin to mature in God, you start to study before you talk. Amen. That's why I talked about don't judge. Eh? Why? When you're mature, you don't judge. You study before you speak. Also, watch means study. Say that study. study. Eh? So there must be a start before you just commit words. Eh? It also means to spy. You need to spy your mouth. Spy. S P Y. Spy. No, a spy. It's one that is spy. What is happening? <laughs> so before words come out, spy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lift your hand up. Close your eyes. You know why I say say because you hear you believe it. Close your eyes. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I put a spy on my mouth. There must be a spy. <laughs> it also means examiner. Examiner. So on your mouth, there must be something that examines your words. Say loud, examiner. examiner. Uh -huh. You've got to put an examiner. You know when you're writing tests or exams, when I was at the university, we have invigilators that are very serious. If they see you with any foreign material during exams, they catch you, they tear your paper, and they take you on disqualify, like you never entered university. That's how university is where I'm coming from. There was examiners. So you also, God is saying, put an examiner on your tongue. Say loud, in the name of Jesus, I put an examiner on my tongue. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So it means David came to know that the mouth can put you in trouble or your mouth can take you out of trouble. Say that my mouth, my mouth. can put me in trouble me. or take me out of trouble. Yeah. So many people today are in trouble because of the wrong usage of their mouth. Hmm? Amen. I said, hmm. Amen. Do you know why there is war between the Arabs and the Israelites? Simple. Mouth. Somebody talked bad. Somebody also it was hit. So they fought. They are fighting. Mouth is powerful. It can cause injuries. It can create wars. Battles. Wars have come because of wrong use of the mouth. Hmm? I said, hmm. Amen. Your mouth can put you in bondage. Or your mouth can take you out of bondage. So, use your mouth wise. And speak right words in your mouth. Use your mouth wisely. Use your mouth wisely. Close your eyes. Put just uh, my mouth. In the name of Jesus. I will use you wisely. Your mouth is your way up. If you want to go up in life, use your tongue. Speak and say, I want to go down. I'm rising up in the name of Jesus. My finances are going up this year. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to talk your way up. Hmm? I said, talk your way up in the name of Jesus. You have to say, I'm going to make it this time around. I'm going to pass my exam with excellence. Those were in school. Hallelujah. As you are doing that, you are releasing the power that enables you to go up. I prophesy over you. You are going to go up in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. I say you are going to go up in the name of Jesus. Amen, Amen means let it be so. Yes. Means you are receiving it. Hallelujah. Amen. Your mouth is your way into the blessings. Your mouth. Every blessing you want will come by your mouth. Every blessing you want will come by your mouth. Anything you want to see, it will come by your mouth. That's why speak right. Talk right. Hallelujah. Amen. Your mouth is a way into your blessing. So in short, I can say, your blessing is in your mouth. Say loud, my blessings are in my mouth. Where is your blessings? Where is your blessings? They are not in America. They are in your mouth. Okay. Your hand. Your, hand. <laughs> mm. your, fa your, your mouth is your way to favor. Favor. Where people, you say, when people see me, all they think about is just blessing me. When people see me, uh, uh, they just love me. And they want to give me things. That, that's how I say every day. That's how people, when they see me, they want to give me. <laughs> Why? I'm always saying, everywhere I go, when people see me, they want to give me. When people think about me, they want to give me. I am a person people love. That's how I talk about myself. And that come to pass. May you talk the same also in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say, may you talk the same also in the name of Jesus. Amen. The same I'm prophesying. That this church shall be a, a mega church. This church shall call ministers and presidents. They will come and hear the word of God. Hallelujah. And I profess that this church will be a church of millionaires and billionaires in the name of Jesus. I'm saying that because that's what I want to see. And I'm going to see it in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you seeing that? Your mouth is your way into increase. If you want to increase in your finances, use your mouth. Use your what? Your mouth. Your mouth is the connector with the power of God. Your mouth is the connector with the power of God. So if you want to see the power of God, you've got to use your mouth and begin to speak the things you want God to do for you and then your mouth will connect you to the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why tonight I speak over you that this nation of South Africa will favor you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Others they will cry, you will never cry in the name of Jesus. Amen. You and your family, God is going to exempt you in the name of Jesus. Amen. When people say there's no jobs, God will give you all. Amen. Uh, I say God will give you all. Amen. I say when, when people are saying there's no jobs, God will give you the best jobs. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You've got to say that. And then God will make it happen for you. Are you getting these things? Amen. So David is saying, put a watch. That means when it comes to negative feelings, negative feelings, evil, Lack, sickness, keep your mouth sh shut. Don't say, I'm sick, I'm sick. That's what people are sick. When I feel sick, me, I don't say I'm sick. I begin to say, My body is the house of God. Sickness will cast in my body. I command to dissolve and go in the name of Jesus. I call my body healed. And as I'm doing that, that's how my body receives healing. Hallelujah. Amen. So you shall have to show you. Don't say what you feel. Don't say I'm broke. When there is no money in your pocket, don't say I'm broke. And I said, I don't know these days I'm very broke. You'll be broke. So again, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I don't go broke. Say loud, I don't go broke. I don't go broke. Say loud, my pocket, my pocket. Always, always has money. Has money. <laughs> so that's what you must be saying. I always say this. My pocket, today when I was preparing, I was prophesying. I said, Angels, go and bring money for me in the name 
of Jesus. Then I said, money, come to me in Jesus' name. And I'm expecting money to come because I've called it. Money can hear my voice. I believe in my words and I know my words come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I can never go broke. Amen. I said, hmm. What if people talked that way every day? They will have money in their pockets. And you see, if you say otherwise, the world will label you like you're different. You must be different. Hallelujah. Amen. Because they are used to say, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm very broke. You will never hear that in my tongue. You will never hear that in my mouth. Because I don't want to be broke. And I know if I don't want to be broke, I must never confess I'm broke. When there's no money, I say, money must come in my pocket. Hallelujah. Amen. Money must come in my face. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I'm a tither. I'm a sower. I command open doors for money to come my way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got to begin to say what you want to say. Don't say your feelings. I feel, I feel. That's how you know somebody is a child. They talk about their feelings a lot. I just feel, I just feel. You see, you're dealing with a child. Children, they say, mommy, I feel, mommy, I feel. When you mature, you don't talk about your feelings. You talk about what you want to feel. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray for you. May your mouth be sharpened in the name of Jesus. I say, may your mouth be sharpened in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your mouth is the door that allows access. It's like in my mouth. Amen. Is the door that allows access. Amen. Your mouth is the door that allows access. Access. So whatever you want to access can be accessed by your mouth. Listen, people, people don't know these things. They think their mouth is for ice cream and McDonald's. Uh -huh. Eat McDonald's, eat ice cream. But much more, your mouth is for changing your life with. Amen. It's like in my mouth. Amen. It's for changing me. How are you going to change your life? By your mouth. Are we being blessed? Amen. That's how on Saturday, when I was done with my concert and when the fish cleaning, I just went to pray in tongues all over the world. And you also joined me. Now I began to sing in tongues louder in the road. Because they didn't understand my language. So I was just going. I was prophesying mighty things in the spirit. Hallelujah. I just be walking in the road and quiet. I talk. So again, my mouth Amen. is the door Amen. that allows access. access. God finds access into your life by the words of your mouth. God finds access into your life by the words of your mouth. How did God come into your heart? You opened your mouth and you said, Jesus, I confess you as the Lord over my life. When you said that, the Holy Ghost came into you and recreated your spirit and you became born again. Hallelujah. So can you see how did God come into your heart? By you opening your mouth and confessing Jesus as Lord. The same way, that's how God will give you things. The same way, that's how God will give you money. The same way, that's how God will heal you. Open your mouth and confess. Hallelujah. How you came into the kingdom of God is how you're going to live in the kingdom. Amen. Speaking and expecting. Speaking and expecting. Hallelujah. Amen. Your ways are the door. Your life is only changed by your ways. Satan can have access by your ways. All this kind of talk. I'm going on. I'm growing old. I think I'm growing old. My bones are becoming weak. They'll become weaker and weaker. 
That's why in the name of Jesus, whatever you, you've spoken against your life, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I say, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. People have spoken bad over their lives. I don't know how I'm old. I don't know if I can be married. Oh, that's how people have bound themselves. I will be blessed. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you receive the grace of God to talk right. I say receive grace to talk right. In the name of Jesus. Look at Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18. Look at this. Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18. Look at this. Matthew 18, 18. Now, now listen carefully. I've been confessing and saying this. No one can kill me by a gun. I can never die by a gun. I will never die by being shot by people. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what I say. I may remember when we were there at Windsor. Three robbers entered the place. I may remember that. Three robbers entered the, the church. They did nothing. The Lord slapped them and they sat in the service and heard the horses. I had to go and speak them in the office and rebuke them. And they went. Because I said that. That's why I prophesy over you. You never die by a gun. Amen. Amen. I said, You never die by a gun. You never die by accident. Amen. You never die by robbers. Amen. You never die by gangsters. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You have to say this. I can't die by accident. You are saying that. So even when an accident happened, God will single you out in that car and escape you because we've been prophesying that I can never die by accident in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 18, 18, look at this. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus is telling you this. Matthew 18, 18, red letters. Verily, verily, I say unto you, my God, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So again, whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. So can you see? God is responding to you by your words. Say by my words. So what if I don't bind? Can God bind? No. So every time you bind something, God also bound it. If you say sickness, I bind you. If you say that in faith, also God bind it. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you bind, God also bind. Do you see that? Amen. I said, do you see that? And whatever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. So God showed me today that many evil things happening in the world. The church has allowed it. But in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever shooting that is happening in South Africa, as a prophet and as a man of God, I command it bound in the name of Jesus. As I command it bound in the name of Jesus. Every evil in this nation, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We must bind and God bound it. Hallelujah. Amen. So can you see much evil happening in your life? You've allowed it. Say loud. Say in the name of Jesus. The evil in my family, I bind it. Now, that's what you must be doing. You see what is not right in your family. You say, no, 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 no. Devil, I bind you in my family. Stop. In Jesus' name. And then if you do that, also God will bind it. You see your family, if anybody dies with heart attack, heart attack, you have, to say, you have to start and say, in the name of Jesus, heart attack, I bind you. I stop you in my house. In Jesus' name. If you do that, then God will bind it. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, I have power, I have power. to bind. bind. Now, in the good news, he says it this way. In the good news, he says this. 
And so I tell you, all of you, what you prohibit on earth shall be prohibited in heaven. Ah. Whatever you did, whatever you allow or you disallow on earth shall be disallowed in heaven. So again, heaven, heaven. Respond, respond by my response. By my response. So if that be the case, then I'm gonna watch my tongue. I'm gonna watch my mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything you don't like in your life, change it. So again, I can change. I can change. Anything I don't like I in my life. my life. If you see you don't like being broke, then start speaking, being having money. No, it's not about that. If you don't like being sick, start speaking, being healed. If you don't like whatever you don't like in your life, change it. I said, change it. Amen. I said, change it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You wake up in the morning, you say, I am blessed. You say, you say, Stan is blessed. My feet are blessed. My hands are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, my hands will pray for presidents in the name of Jesus. Amen. My hands will pray for ministers in the name of Jesus. Amen. My hands will pray in the name of Jesus. I'm prophesying that. That's what I'm going to see. Because I believe it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have you seen this? Amen. So, whatever you prohibit, God prohibit. Then it says this. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So actually, if you permit to be killed, God permit also. So again, I disallow, I disallow people to kill me. I will never die by the will of man in the name of Jesus. I will only die when I finish the work of God on this earth. You must talk then. Hmm? You should say, I will be a great businesswoman. I will do business and my business will sell. I will do business and my business will prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch out. This place is too small for us. Say amen. 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 Say louder. Amen. amen. I said this place is too small for us. Amen. We are going to break all these and people will sit everywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Right here. Again, I repeat, this place is too small for us. Amen. Tell out that, amen. I believe it. I say, this place is too small for us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at this. When you speak with faith, your words can recreate things. Your words can repair things or your words can change things. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen to this. Even your deliverance is in your mouth. Say my deliverance, my deliverance. is in my mouth. In my mouth. Where is your deliverance? In my mouth. Where is your deliverance? In my mouth. Your deliverance is not in Ghana or Nigeria. It's in your mouth. It's like in my mouth. My mouth. Say that of my mouth. mouth. Carries Deliverance. I'll show you this. What to deliver you? What to deliver you? Do you believe it? What to deliver you? The deliverance of your kids, your children, is in your mouth. You say, My children will pass away. My children, God will keep them. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you have to speak over them. The deliverance of your family. Is in your mouth. The deliverance of your money is in your mouth. Look at Proverbs 12, verse 6. Proverbs 12, verse 6. Proverbs 12, verse 6. Let your eyes rest on the Bible. I want you to see it. Proverbs 12. 
verse 6. Look at this. Proverbs 12, 6. Look at this. The words of the wicked are to lie in wet of blood. Now can you see? If you speak bad, your words are waiting to kill you. That's what it says. The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood. Many people spoke death and death waited for them. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the latter part, he says this. But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. What to deliver you? Say it out of my mouth. What to deliver you? What to deliver you? The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. That means your mouth can bring you out of sickness. Your mouth can bring you out of the sick bed. Your mouth, again, my mouth. my mouth. Now, the mouth of the upright is the one that is speak right, shall deliver them. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why in the name of Jesus, whatever you've spoken against your life, today, we reverse it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, I say we reverse it in the name of Jesus. We are reversing it. Ha! Ah. I say ha! Ah. Amen. What to deliver you? My mouth. Did you see the Bible? Amen. The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. When you know this, you don't need to go for deliverance classes. It's so again my mouth. My mouth. Shall deliver me. Shall deliver me. What to deliver you? My mouth. That's why in the name of Jesus, angels are all over this place. Amen. Angels are moving in this building. Amen. Angels are arresting every evil in the name of Jesus. Amen. Many people, things will never get right until their mouth get right. Mm -hmm. Your life will never get right until your mouth get right. Mm -hmm. Your finances will never become right until your mouth get right. You've got to get right in the way you talk. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Get right. Get right. I said get right. Now, last week I asked you, do words matters? What was the answer? Yes. yes. I'm not telling you about Do words matters? Yes. How much do they matter? We said life or yes. death. That means, if truly you believe your words are life or death, then you stop talking here now and talking rubbish. Because you know your words are alive and dead. That means every time you open your mouth, remember I told you that Satan is very clever. He has thrown words in music. The tune is very nice. And then behind your words, I always like this. I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad. Then when you sing that song for three years, one day you'll be mad because you're prophesying. That's why many people have entered into mental institutes. They do songs, they sang a song for too long, and then those words affected their mind. You even hear some songs, some melodies, nice, and then I'm stupid, I'm just acting, I'm stupid. That's why they verify songs. I don't listen to all these songs because they don't build. Amen. Or do you just think that songs are just songs? No. When you see a song is released and it hits the market, there's a spirit where it came from. The same way if you see a gospel hit the market, the spirit of God empowered it. Your songs, they make you. 
the songs you listen to. That's why songs can bring you closer to Satan. Also, songs can bring you closer to God. This musician who sing, the devil was a worshiper in heaven. Mind you, he knows music a lot. That's why you can see when you give these guys music, you take it to the dress code. You see the dress code, just pants. You see women with just pants, and they're dancing. Doo -doo -doo. The song, the inspiration is demonic. So they have to give them the dress code. And you think they are just dancing. They, they are saying their bottles are outside. And everything just even thighs are showing that they're just. And you children they are watching, they are planting something in children. Because they are there to destroy. Hallelujah. Amen. As hallelujah. Amen. Have you been blessed? Amen. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. 2021. Proverbs 18. 2021. So we are in the school. Proverbs 18. 2021. Are you there? The Bible says this. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Wait. How are you going to be filled in your stomach? Say, by my words. So can you see there are people who are talking bad after they work very hard. I don't know. I'm working. Nothing's working for me. I, I, I don't know. This way, I'm tired. I'm it's pregnant. As they work hard, nothing to show. Because what affects your, your, your finances is your mouth. So there are people who are working very hard. They have nothing to show because their talk is very wrong. So the Bible says, your, your belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of your mouth. That's why talk well. Whether, whether your salary was 2,000, say, hey, I'm rising up. Hallelujah. Who never lack in this house? God is taking me higher financially. Hallelujah. But though this kind of talk, my salary is too small now, you see, it's just limiting you and limiting God to bless you. That's why you say they work hard and they are lacking. How do I work hard? I've got nothing to show. Yeah, you are talking it already. Now listen how this how these things work. When you see you are lacking money, that's the time to talk that you have. That's how it works. My friend, when you feel sick, that's the time you have to say, I'm healed. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got to speak. Contrary to what you see or feel, that's how you see miracles. Amen. You have to be disciplined. You hear this, also these things. Devil is speaking in South Africa. It has come all over. You hear people now say, when they talk, oh shame. I'm going to pay this. It's all over. Hear me, oh shame. Oh no, oh shame. It's the devil has inspired people to speak shame on their tongue. To communicate evil to people. Me, I correct people. Oh, shame. No, no, no. Don't, don't shame me. Oh, no, oh, shame. Oh, no, oh, shame. It's all about how we can hear this. It's in South Africa. It has captured people. Every single statement. Oh, shame. Uh, it's demonic, it's devilish. Say again. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I, will shame. I will never shame. So from today, remember, if you have shame, say, no, no, I can't not shame. Blessed. Why not say blessed? Only shame. Because the devil wants you to speak shame and not blessed. So again, blessed. blessed. So again, blessed. blessed. So when, when you talk, we talk blessed. Why shame only? Why only negative way that too big to come out of your mouth? Satan wants you to talk that way for him to operate. You hear it all over South Africa. Shame. Oh, shame. And so some even say, and unconscious. Oh, shame. Listen to the captain in people's language. You hear this shame a lot. I'm going to have that. It's all over South Africa. Where did it come from? Satan inspired it for people to be talking shame, shame, oh shame, oh shame. Now they have swallowed it. Now they even speak it without even knowing that they are even speaking. That's how the word of God must enter you. When you begin to talk, that you know that you are speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I will never shame. Will never shame. Say loud, in the name of Jesus. I will, I will never shame. 
In the spirit, you don't fight with knives. These people they go in the church with knives. That's carnality. And they are praying, devil, leave my ah, with them. Mm -mm. You don't fight Satan with knives. You can't see him with the spirit. You fight Satan with your words. Say my words. Say my words. My words. That's how you fight Satan. That's why first team of the six twelve, I'll quote it for us most of the time. First team of the six twelve, the Bible says this. First team of the six twelve. It says this. Fight! So we're in a fight of words. Fight! A good fight of faith. Amen. Then he said, lay hold on eternal life. Where aren't you also called? Then he tells you how you fight and has professed or confessed a good confession. So how do you fight? By confessing a good what? Confession. If you feel sick, begin to say, in the name of Jesus, I come and bore the healed. I come and stomach clear. Uh, you see, what are you doing? You are fighting. You are fighting. And the power of God will come in your stomach and heal your stomach. Hallelujah. Amen. So it works. Hmm? Are you being blessed? So you fight with words. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. The Bible says this. They overcame the death of him by the blood. And what next? By the words of their testimony. So can you see that? By the blood and by your words. Say my word. Amen. How are you going to win every battle? Say by my word. Amen. You are going to win your battles by your words. That means... How the people of Old Testament fought in their battles, that's how we are going to fight the same way today. Amen. Amen. No difference. You see, David fought by words. Before he used those slings and the stones, the first battle was words. If your words are wrong, even your instrument can never work. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why it's important to know that your words are very powerful. As you go out tonight, never ever speak negative in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said never ever speak negative in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, how did they fight? The people of God, Abraham, Daniel. How did they fight? All these, Esther. How did they fight? How did they win? It's by their words. That's why we are taught in 2 Corinthians 4.13. The Bible says this. We having the same, so again, the same, same, the same spirit of faith David has, and you also have it today. The same spirit of faith Abraham had, you also have. Say, so again, I have the same. Yes. Say loud, I have the same. I have the same. You have the same spirit of faith that they had. We having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, we believed, therefore we speak. They believed, therefore they spoke. So can you see, how are you going to win every battle? Believe, speak. I want to come out of financial problem. Believe that you are, you are for money and what? Speak. Are you going to be healed? Believe you are healed and what? Speak. Are you going to come out of any problem? Believe and what? That's how they came out. They believed, they spoke. We also believe we do what? Speak. That's how we are going to win every battle. We must believe in our heart and speak with our mouth. Amen. Are you seeing that? Amen. Now, let me show you one example in the cross of a man who fought by words. I will remember the son of Goliath and David. Goliath, the small, David, the small boy, and Goliath, the giant. You read it in. Okay, I want to show you this story. First Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to read 4 to 7, and I'll jump. 37, 43, then 44 to 50. Write this. 
1 Samuel 17, 4 to 7, comma, 37, comma, 43, comma, 44, comma, 45 to 50. 1 Samuel. Look at this. 17, verses 4. So this is Goliath. He came and insulted the Israelites. Literally insulted them for 40, for 40 days. He come and insult God, insult the name of God. And all of them will run away from him. But this day someone was there who knew his God, David. But look at this four. Look at this. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistine named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubits and a span. Wait. Six cubits and a span. That's the Bible terms. Did you know that from here, from your elbow, your elbow, look at me, from your elbow to your finger, that is one, that is a cubit. It's a cubit. Span is a finger like this. That's a span. That's the length of his finger. It's a span. So this guy was six cubit. Now, make this cubit six of them. For me to hear. Six of them. He was taller. That means if you convert today, it's about uh, nine feet. That means add maybe two of me. He was three meters tall. You know what meters like this? Add another meter. Three meter and a span. He was very tall. <laughs> Goliath. Are you getting that? Mm. Now look at this. This is five. He had a helmet of brass. Upon his head, and he was armed with the coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. Now, these are old language. Five thousand shekel. That means three thousand shekels. It's about three to five kg. That is no one sh one shekel. Okay, three. 300 shekel is about 3 to 5 kg. That's his coat. Now, 5,000 shekel is about 80 kg. Who can measure such, such, such a coat? Imagine just his coat is 80 kg. Can you wear just a bag of 25 kg on yourself? Now, this guy was wearing the coat. Just, that's how he was. He was very strong. His jacket was 80 kg. It's about 100 pounds. Those who that's how big it was to wear a coat and the spear, his spear somebody used to cut it for him like maybe somebody my age who cut his, his spear his spear for him I saw the spear was about 12 kg so how can you throw 12 kg when this guy is, is lifting 12 kg with you mil, mil, the, you see him struggling but this guy at 12 kg Spear. So that means you throw that spear. That's the way. That spear enter you. Are you are gone. So it was a dangerous man. But look at how David defeated him. Verse 37. Look at something here. Verse 37. Look at this. David said, Aha. Can you see how the battles were being won? Before he fought, it was faced by weight. David said something. Are, are, have you seen that? David said, verse 23, are you there? Yeah. Verse 23. And the Philistine said, Aha, uh -huh. do you see? They were facing the battle of words. David said, Goliath said. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Goliath says, Am I a dog? You come to me with, with the swings and stones. They were exchange of words before they fought. So actually, you lose by weight first. Do you see that? There are people who have lost already in their job, even before they go in their job. They have spoken defeat already. I don't even succeed. They will never succeed. They will never succeed. Life is tough. It will never be good with you because you've spoken already. But David said something about his God. Also, Goliath also said, Are you seeing this? 
43, 44. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, I will give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And not 45. And David also said, Are you seeing this? So God says, Come, I will kill you. And I will give you to the bread of the air. David, David also says, I will cut you. Hello, can you see that? David spoke, Goliath spoke. The strength of man and his words. So they spoke, they fought word by word, and David's word was more powerful because he was caught in the name of the Lord. Now look at this. Look at this. David spoke, and if you go down here, the Philistine also cursed David. Cursed him. Also, David cursed him. Can you see? It was go and listen. Good story. I want you to go and read your time. I want you to see. David said, Tristan said, this John said, David said, What are you saying about that problem? Pro problem is talking to you. Quiet. Talk back. That pain is talking to you. Quiet. Talk back. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You see, every time pain comes, it's talking to you. Talk to it back. There are many times that I was supposed to come to church. I felt pain. Like I was supposed just to sleep and not to walk. But I said, no! Get out in the name of Jesus. No! In Jesus' name. And I begin to walk talking. And as I enter this place, or that place where pain has left of it. Well, when it came, I spoke to it. Somebody said, I don't know. I want to go to church. I don't feel like going to church. I've got so much pain. That's how you make that pain. And if you're not careful, you can take it to death. Many people are tolerating things instead of talking to them. What if David didn't speak? If you go down, verses 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. Uh -uh. His words fought for him. Your words will fight for you. I say, Your words will fight for you. I like that. And I say, your way to fight for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Your way to fight for you. Now in closing. What can I do to increase power on my mouth? Last week I told you, remove what? Lying. I remember that. Say loud. Remove lying. Remove lying. Say louder. Remove lying. Lying weakens your mouth. If you tell a lie every day, tell a lie every day, your tongue will be very weak. When you speak, it can't carry power. That's why many people's tongue has got no power. Because they are lying. Are you being blessed? Amen. You hear people? You take a picture of someone's car and say, my car, my car. They post on Facebook, this is my car. But they're just standing on car, someone's car at the mall. And it can even be very bad when you, when you post that car, they honor your friend, your friend on Facebook. And then the pressure will post a point and say, no, that's my car. So can you see that? So line we can put down. That's what, that's what. Now today I want to close with this. Number two. So number one, remove lies. If you want to grow power here, take lies out of your tongue. Every time you want to lie, just remember, hey, I'll be powerless. And stop the lies. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I receive grace. I receive grace. Not to lie. Not to lie. You know, it will take time for you to come to this level, but just practice to come out of lies. Hallelujah. Number two, how can I make my tongue powerful? Oh, my friend, I'm telling you, you'll be tempted to lie every day. Because Satan wants your mouth weak. Amen. Mm. Move your hand. Now, number two. If you want your mouth to become powerful, number two, I'll put it in three ways. But just one. Talk less. Talk 
Less. All of those two words. Talk. Say louder. Talk. talk. Less. less. So I can talk less. Talk. Yes. Don't talk too much. People talk too much. The Bible says, in many words, uh, they never miss sin. You talk too much. Such people, they, they always make mistakes in their words. There's a time just to be quiet, especially if you are in the people, in the company of people who are mature than you. Don't talk too much. If you are among pastors, don't talk too much. Be quiet and be learning. I know you are a child if you talk too much. Children, ever seen a child with, with I'm an opportunity before. Huh? The child will just say, Mommy, yeah, Mommy, yeah, Daddy. Just talk, 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 because there's no maturity. They don't want to talk. My, my friend, they're my friend at school. They're my friend at school. Eh? Children talk too much. When you mature, you talk less. Talk less. In bracket, put it this way. Think before you talk. It's the same thing. Talk less or think before you talk. Think before you talk. Think before you talk. There are people just vomit anyhow. Just vomit. I'll tell them my mind. I'll tell them my mind. Which mind are you telling them? We just come on and I'm spiritual. I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell him my mind. Which mind? Come on mind. You know, when you let when you put a break on your mouth, as I said, was praying, through your mind, think before you talk. That means if I say this, how will they feel? Even if it's a bad information, there's a way to phrase it. Did you hear what I just said? When I said it's a message of disappointment, you can phrase it in a particular way. Because you're saying, you're saying it in truth. Tell them, think. Think. Before you talk. Before you talk. So I can think. think. Before you talk. Before you talk. There are two areas you must be slow. Also in bracket put. Be slow to speak. It's the same thing. Talk less. Think before you talk. Now, when you are too you will be doing that fast. When the word wants to come out, mm, if I say that, how will they receive it? But you can become very sharp when you mature. Within seconds, you are thinking ways that can help people. You see? There are times. I just go quiet. Somebody and something I go quiet. Doesn't mean I'm weak. I've just decided at that time if I talk, they are going to fight. So I choose to swallow that and remove it. Literally, there was there was a day somebody sending me audios of insulting me. Deleted. I don't want to buy them. I just deleted them. Another piece. But if you want to follow, you will insult each other. And those who like, and I want to end up fools, all of you. And you speak bad things against each other. And Satan will work. Mature people, they talk. Do you never be slow to talk? Also, be slow, be slow to be angry. To be angry. James one nineteen. It says, James one nineteen. It says, beloved, let each one of you be quick to listen, but be slow to talk and slow to be angry. Stand up with your feet. It's very powerful. Be slow to speak. Be slow. You know you can communicate information that, that, that is wrong. Huh? There are people who have communicated wrong information without verifying it. Because they are too quick to talk. Oh, then we find them here. They were walking together. Here they go. Mm. We find them. We find them. They were holding hands. So now they are adding something. No. Everything, don't be quick to go and take out to people. 
verify. Second, verify. Say that verify. Verify. When you mature, you don't jump quickly and begin to speak. You pause. You study. Then you observe the source of that thing. Then you can really see where it's going to go. There are times me I can become very upset. Somebody was owing me my money. I became upset. I'm not, I'm not about your parent. I'm not your, I just spoke out of that abscess, but I didn't go there. Because I was, I'm, I'm wise. Are you saying these things? Yeah. I want you to cut the offering. Come and put it. I'll save you my communion, the communion myself. 